So I'm Ankush. I don't want to take much time, but I lead the business unit of e-commerce intelligence at Twitter. And I've been with Twitter for seven years. My previous avatar was I'm a market
four top brands. One is Pillsbury. Pillsbury is the Atta brand. You have cake mixes. You have pancake mixes. The second is Hagendaz ice cream. You may have seen from parlors across in Bangalore. Uh, that is, is Hagendaz. Then we have a brand called Betty Crocker. Betty Crocker pancakes, which is into pancake mixes. And uh, we have a granola bar brand, which is Nature Valley, largely in India. Of course, outside of India, we have brands like Cheerios and uh, a big cereal player outside India. Very excited to be here. Uh, for us, uh, we have different kinds of brands from everyday consumption, Atta to most premium ingredients, ice cream. So, data plays a very important role for us in e-commerce. So, looking forward, looking forward to meet all of you. Is it necessary or important? Hey, Balaji here. I I represent the company Duroflex. So, uh, I hope most of you know the company Duroflex even. We are uh, one of the leading players in mattress. So, other than mattress, we are into furniture space. So, mostly uh, in the comfort area, primarily in sofas and recliners. While we are known for mattresses, that's a new entry for us and we are trying to explore that much further. Uh, the comfort space. So, Duroflex is a 50 year old organization, uh, now run by the second generation entrepreneurs. And uh, the good part, uh, unfortunately, you know, COVID, fortunately, unfortunately, COVID only accelerated uh, you know, the comfort space at home. So, while pre COVID, uh, the um, I would say the focus on having a good mattress, having good comfort at home, Focus on health, etc. was uh, not were not the primary focus for everything, but I think COVID changed all that and all the focus on you know having ensuring that you get a good sleep. So we we you know we were one of the uh, most recognized brands during that period because we ran this campaign called Sleep for Immunity. So and that was being promoted across the country. I think uh, you know that really fueled our brand and uh, you know COVID only fueled further. Consumption of mattress and you know giving focus to what you have at home and how do you how do you improve that to improve your health so all that you know gave gave a huge wave for mattress industry and the uh, Europlex as a company you know uh, we rode that wave and uh, over the past three to five years uh, we have grown multiple number of times and uh, so we have two brands under the umbrella Sleepyhead and Europlex so both put together in the consumer space in the consumer space while we do a lot of other OEM and uh, B2B business as well. In the consumer space today, B2C occupies more than 50% of the portfolio. So that's uh, that's the quantum of uh, B2C and B2C is a very important piece for the organization. And digital has been at the core of whatever we do. And uh, you know, that's where uh, the whole focus into B2C is in digital and ensuring that you know we we are updated is so that's what that's what is Europlex all about. So happy to be here, interacting with you all. Hope to have a great discussion. Good evening, everyone. My name is Abdul Hussain. I lead the e-commerce channel for watches and packing company limited. I lead the association with Flipkart, Amazon, Mintra, Nike, Geo as well. The chief brands that I said are Titan, Fast Track, Sonata and a host of other international brands for which we have the license, including and especially prominent with Titan. Hey, hi everyone, Ashwin here. Uh, I manage the B2C uh, e-commerce business or marketplaces for Puma. Uh, you would have all heard of Puma or Puma, uh, both pronunciations are fine. A little bit about the company. In India, we are uh, 2,900 uh, crores last year. Uh, India is one of the few major markets where Puma is the number one ahead of uh, other, ahead of our competitors. Globally, last 10 years have been really good for Puma. It's been the fastest growing sports brand. And in India, it's been, I've been here for four and a half years and it's been exciting. As, as a big sports fan myself, it's been really exciting to be part of the journey. Uh, I was doing, last three years have been uh, in, in, in my current role uh, and uh, Lot of uh, Puma sells both through the outright channel and on the market uh, on the B2C channel on all the platforms which you mentioned, the Azure and the Mintra of the world. So, uh, yeah, it's been exciting to be here um, as part of the journey. A uh, little bit about myself I've been here for four years, four and a half years now. Before that, I was in management consulting for uh, around uh, four years. I was with BCG in Mumbai. Uh, yeah, that's, that's it for me. Hi, this is Sarinji. I am with the media and digital marketing for BCG and this is Fast and Zero. So what you're drinking right now is mud and water into the tank. <laughs> 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 That's one of our 
very often speaking to people in Arish for business, uh, which is a wonderful business. There is another business that is sold to to me, which is a rectal cell medicine based in Bangalore. It's a startup with Pia Kauria. Then there is a beverages business, which is tea and coffee at Tata. And then the Bombay business, which is uh, healthy spices and a whole list of a lot of the RT, uh, RT B also is in there, and RT E also is something which we are launching. So basically, I've been on a growth track, which we call ourselves three years down in the market because it, it got formed after a culmination of a lot of smaller companies that we had even with Tata. Um, and that's why <coughs> I think we, we are very excited to have registered as a co partner of everything that we do, um, whether it is B2C, whether it is in com, and whether it is media. Uh, I also look after some sort of the B2C business within the company, which is primarily the food business, where we have a lot of the smaller ones, the social business, and the smaller ones. And there is a lot of synergy which gets built in between what you do in the upper funnel and the bottom funnel. And I'm here to really learn from you guys and what you do at the bottom funnel. <laughs> so I think that that's exciting for me and we are looking forward to this discussion. Thank you. Um, hi everybody, this is Jyotsna and I'm from the marketing team of MC Grid. Uh, I've been with MC Grid for about two years and before that I um, I come from India background. I was working with Times of India for five years. And uh, this roundtable is a little snippet of uh, what I exactly do at MC Grid. So yeah, I hope you guys get to enjoy it. Let's let you a round of applause for each of us. So I'm going to start off with this presentation. Okay. Post that, we'll get into the questions that are coming from you. Okay. So essentially, the whole idea was we wanted to understand how we all operate in this cooking and beverage space. Okay. Um, the setup is very different because it's not a full product. Add validation, basically detecting whether the traffic on the net is good or bad. Was our focus in terms of food and beverage across the region. Actually, Amazon was our first client with the beverage. Essentially, every time you download an app, whether it's a human or whether it's a bot, there's essentially what you said on the So that's how it started. Through the journey, we have been here in Southeast Asia where we actually encountered a client of ours who told us a video. He told us, Look, this side of the world doesn't have Amazon. Can you do something for us? And that's the evolution. So, four years ago, we were just it was basically understanding what happened in e commerce. So that's the beginning of everything. So that was the that was the culmination. So you started out of India or very much out of India. But our first client was actually sitting in Southeast Asia, which is in India. So we were lucky in both the businesses to actually have someone who sponsored our okay. uh, we currently work with uh, uh, IBC, the Daniel Arts, PepsiCo across the Middle East, the nine countries, uh, Michael Plan, uh, various uh, mobiles, apparel, uh, telecom. You name it, we actually have a business. Okay. Uh, even foods. Okay. Uh, uh, so we have that uh, very good bit. Okay. Uh, and it's a lot of information. And the interesting journey for us is that when we've actually gone and spoken to clients, we've realized the lacunae of data or the supposed intelligence that they have, which the deltas are there. Right? And I thought this would be a good way of actually just segueing on this. So some of this would be very common knowledge, it would be phase two, but it's okay. We can actually expand on that and take it further. So I'm going to let you just kick off this presentation and say that we all know growth's happening phenomenally. We've got various numbers, all these sources exist, right? Um, I'm sorry. Right? So things are good. And COVID was a huge impetus, right? It really shifted it. Um, I remember our shares in uh, FMCG, etc. from the recent days was one to one to two percent, right? Uh, today that dynamics has changed completely, right? Uh, overall contribution of FMCG. We've seen telecom. In fashion, we've seen apparel, we've seen health, uh, home, home furnishing, all those taking off, right? And COVID, I think, accelerated. Uh, I think we were having side conversations and I can talk about it later, but we've seen some kind of contraction in Southeast on the e commerce channel, right? Uh, consumers contracting, buying big packs, therefore, monthly is getting shot. Now, anyway, that's usually the site, but great place to be in, right? 18% is, I think, minimum. From the client, we've got 40%, 50%. Contributions coming in from MSC, growing at 20 percent very easy, right? 
So it's a good space. But yes, you've got ups and downs coming. Right? So that's what it is. So perfect space to be. And therefore, it's important to understand what is business intelligence, right? Business intelligence, there are a lot of definitions that exist, right? It's essentially basically using technology to gather data, uh, analyze that data to help you make your decisions. Okay. Now there are various clubs to it, right? What are the data that you're collecting? How is sacrosanct is it? Is it integrated into your systems? Or each one has their own mini castle that they look at their own data and say, okay, this is what I'm doing, so on and so forth. How is the quality of that data? Is it accurate? Is there a governance around it? Is there a rhythm around it? Right? Or is it once a year you look at it and say, okay, I do all my projections and everything comes and goes. Right? The other side is the analysis of the data as well. Right? How do you look at the analysis? What do you do with that analysis? Right? You track it, you analyze. So you can actually use business intelligence to monitor as well as govern your industry. And you can actually also track data. Right? That's the beauty of whatever we do here. And then you have respectable dashboards and reporting templates that can be used across the system. Um, there's a quote that I love, and I, I find this to be amazing. Right? I'm going to read this out. It's by Sun Tzu, The Art of War. If you know the enemy and yourself, you need not fear the result of a hundred battles. Okay? If you know yourself, but not the enemy, for every victory gained, you will also suffer a defeat. Okay? If you know neither the enemy nor yourself, you will succumb to any battle. I think this consolidates business intelligence. It's a battlefield policy. Right? If you know yourself and your enemy, don't worry. If you don't know either, you've got a big problem. But you know yourself and you don't know enemy, well, you'll gain. You'll have victories. But for every victory gain, you'll also have a loss. And therefore, it becomes critical to understand how and where you actually need to know that. And it's across all facets, right? We, we have it right from your customer acquisition, we come to your assortment, your fulfillment, um, your pricing strategy, you name it, we need data for this, right? Um, media spend, what should I be buying, what should I be selling, should I be doing banners, what keywords to pitch on, all of those are critical in the industry. Now, if I don't know what is happening with the relative side, I'm lost, because I can buy it. But is it making an impact? Right? So therefore, can I use business intelligence? Can I use technology to get this going at a much faster rate? Right? Can I have real time or as real as possible? Right? Can I have that automated? Can it give me insights? Can it reduce the human error which otherwise happens saying, I saw many external barato over that one became thousand. Okay, so manually it is impossible, right? To travel, but it does happen. Um, so can you reduce all of these elements through technology, through automation, through integration of data sources, so on and so forth, and, it, and also ensure that it's across the organization. It doesn't stay in a consolidated knowledge center, right? It should be freely available for everyone in the company, right? All departments. I think that's also something that we realize as we're working with our clients, right? It tends, data tends to stay in one place, right? And there's a lot of data that's sitting there, but the organization is not necessarily using that data. <coughs> because of various reasons, right? Um, and like I said, the users are complete. I think the only team I think missed out over here would be the legal team. Okay? So the legal teams also use this data, can use this data, and we keep on using this data. Okay? So be it your, um, your e-com manager right up to your e-com managers, your agencies, your content guys, all of them can use this, your R&D can use Right? Um, consumer insights, your online reputation managers also can use all of this data. Right? Or the question that I want to use is whatever data that you're collecting, etc., is it going down and percolating to all of these units and entities in your company? Right? Because the data makes sense for each and every department. Right? Um, so therefore, just giving you some snippets of how this helps certain brands. Uh, and these are all, again, masks, clients, etc. But this is basically available in Amazon on this category. Um, client was very happy with this. Saying, yeah, I'm okay. Self ID. Okay. And this also was not, it was, we basically even do it at a geotag level. So if you promise, we do it at a geotag level also. Right? So you can actually go down to that level and see what it is you have. So we just give them an overall level. 15th, they were very happy. Uh huh. Viability head. 
minus given in your critical to the 10th with the daughter's from Philip. Again, the pair. Let me show them what is happening with competition. At a global level, competition is 20 points plus ahead of you. And more so critically during the principal to the 10th. They've done things like that. Right? Today that's their number two. Right? And it's a KPI that is looked at by two. And it's a very well established. Yeah, brand. So critical to have that lens that you actually look at. Clients looking at uh, this is I think uh, you, uh, appliances. Very happy with the plan. Four days, perfectly okay. Tell you, enter. Everything is happening. My sales are great. Everything is happening. Lens of competition comes in. My tummy way up. And what happens when I enter? Amazon will tell you two days, eight. Post two days on certain categories, the, the consumer will switch. Will switch to a product which is going to Right? Uh, 48 hours is the kind of band that they look at. Right? Beyond which consumers will change. And they will lose some out. Last week used to get filled. No sales. But they're still okay with it. When you actually look at this, then you realize hey, there's opportunity sitting for you. Are you looking at this data? Pricing. Pricing is normal, right? So this plant again, a large player, had people sitting and actually scanning, physically scanning sites for their code, uh, SKUs or KDI, etc. Right? And looking at it and saying, you price this plant, and so the access, all right, this thing is nice. So beautiful Excel used to get done. Take a couple of days, and then they used to get into this, right? Bit um, of a lag. No problems in it. It used to work. Can you automate it, make it faster, give you better insights? Yes, you can. At a daily level, you can get real time reporting, huge amount of uh, data points that come in. It can tell you what your uh, ASP, what is the discount, etc. And you can trend and see what's happening. Big days are happening, the viralities are happening, what is happening, who's giving increasing discounts, all of that comes in. Literally, ASAP, right? Um, Again, this is a huge violation, and this was COVID for us. COVID clients were screaming, was channel murder was happening everywhere, just after COVID. Prices were all over the place, right? Channel fights were happening, traditional, modern trade, e commerce, all were all over the place, right? And every time the brand would go to the platform announcement, hey, why are you reducing prices? Like, many get the whole platform is there. And there was no control mechanism, right? Or that seller is doing it, so on and so forth, right? Very easy to trap out. Who's actually disrupting and who's creating chaos? And also, if you look at the bottom end and if they're way below price points, that's an uh, indication of uh, counterfeit products being sold. Right? Again, who are they? What are they? And these data points are such an individual. They've used this to actually take do takedowns. Amazon has its own program, which is phenomenal, but the others don't. Right? So, how do you actually use that? Right? So, that's how you can actually use all of these elements of systems that. Uh, Media. Again, you know traffic's coming in, ASP works, right? You know what the volumes are. Are you actually tracking your as well as competition sponsored shares, right? If they're very high on your words, you know that they're actually then taking the prime space, right? And if you're not available, they're going to get fucked, right? So all of these are very, very important points that need to be looked at. Are you looking at it, not looking at it? Why are you not? Those are questions which I want to leave you with. And I'm sure you guys are doing it. I'm just saying, talk about that, right? When we actually get into all of these. Okay? Plan analysis, right? A lot of POTs will go and the brand and the platform will promise you, yeah, yeah, we'll do this promotion, we'll do this, we'll flub it with this thing, we'll run all these things. Are they doing it? What are they doing? And what's the share of voice? What are the banners? Are they going now all discounting? Are they all stopping, stopping to talk about brand? Is ingredients coming out of it? <coughs> All of that can actually come up. And you can actually team that to create stories. Right? And understand what's going on. Um, content. Uh, content is king, right? We all talk about content being king, right? The first phase of anything, right? I'm sure some of you know that. Are we there or not there is something which is always pressing, right? Amazon and Unilever created the perfect page philosophy, right? You have to have these standards, etc. But what about the other platforms? Our experience has built out those kind of things across the board, right? 
and be true to it. So what you can actually do is you can create a snooker where you deserve its competition across a perfect pitch, right? Uh, we've taken it a step further. We looked at image. You could ask the guidelines and your brand guidelines, for example. So if someone else is managing it, and your sellers or distributors are doing it, in such cases, our companies work through that too. Are they actually following the brand guidelines? Is the image is following the brand guidelines, right? I, is it adhering to ASCII standards? Basically, if you have a child on an ad, you're supposed to have an adult also represented, right? It's a call that you can take, but you have to be aware that it's there. Are you doing all this as an example? So all those things also can come into play, right? And it also tells you how you deserve its competition. So you can actually rank it. So the whole idea is happy that Euroclix is on the has the best score as per your Hey. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good for you. So there you go. Right? Uh, but again, that's the way to actually operate on the ground. And well, it's a very valid point because if the content yeah. is right, right? If I specifically run this on Amazon, right? The AMI actually picks up the content score and gives you better than it's actually pushing it up. Right. So it's very important to actually avoid that. Right? Rating um, media analysis, you have the bandwidth to actually go through all of these, understand the sentiment, right? And figure out what are the themes that are coming out of this, right? Can you actually look at these themes? And the interesting thing is, if you look at these themes, right, you can actually break this down. R and D also uses these themes. Right? We've gone and worked with clients where the theming of the product that's coming out goes into R. It goes into, I'll just talk about a simple 